So, welcome. My name is uh, Simon. I'm one of the moderators on Traversy Media's Discord, uh, aka Cookie, and Code Institute Eventura, some might know me. Uh, I figure I wanted to make a short video guide on installing Visual Studio Code on any system, literally, uh, to have the exact same system I have and set up, as I found this to be the easiest way to have it. I have Visual Studio Code on Linux, hence why I did it on the virtual box here, and on my older laptop, which is Windows. Keeping it all in sync has always been a problem uh, until I came across a plugin. And for those that are new, there's always loads of different editors. So you got Adam, you got Visual Studio Code, you got Sublime, Vim, uh, WebStorm. There's so many of them. And the reason I fell for Studio Visual Studio Code was because of the complexity of how Sibli can make things. When I open my editor, I want to do code. And I also have a built-in terminal and Git and everything else is simple and easy. Now, before I begin with it, uh, the only thing you need to have installed is Visual Studio Code. So you can get it from code.visualstudio.com. Uh, click on the button for download for your OS. So I have it already installed. Uh, for other things, when I set up a development environment, Node.js is amazing. Just download and install it. Uh, for Windows, you will need to install Git uh, to make this work. In Download it, click next the whole way and install it for Linux and Mac, it's sudo, and then, well, app get install git. I already have it. Uh, Mac might be a little bit different and you can use the SDM for it as well, but for us, having it built in is a fantastic tool. Um, next part of the thing is all my code is also set to my blog, which I will share. And then I will show you quickly how we can set this up and some cool feature with Visual Studio Code. So let's get cracking. So when you open it up, it looks like this. It's a completely clean install. There's nothing onto it, nothing at all. So I don't even like to have this open every time because it bugs me. So all I need to do is close. On the left-hand side over here, you have your, your Explorer. Normally you use that 90% of the time when you have all your folders and things like that. I will show it in a later. Got search, git, I'll come back to that. Uh, bugs for testing, and we have our extensions. Now to get everything I have set up, all you need is type sync, click on install. While that installs, there is one button that you would love in Visual Studio Code, and that is F1. And it's not because of help, it's because it will give you this little menu. And it's amazing because you can search for anything. So if I need settings, I can go to settings, open my workspace settings, um, I can do you like now? So instead of closing and reopen it, I can just type reload and that's it. So once it's installed, it will ask you and say, we need this, just reload, or you can click the button. Now, uh, to make this work, uh, it's fairly simple to get started and uh, have all those plugins because there are so many of them. All you do is type download. You will see this download settings. You can click on it. It's going to say it opens a, a GitHub link. Once you get into it, make sure you log into your GitHub I should give you also a guide on how to do it. But all you do is generate a new token, pretty name. All you need to do is click gist and generate token. So give it a name, gist, generate token. That's it. This is to save all your settings. Uh, so make sure you store the code. Once it's done, it will look like this. So make sure you store this at a safe area. And that way, if you need to upload or download it again, you can just use your own code or you can also use mine. So we'll enter this and it's going to ask for the gist ID. Now the gist ID is already on my website. I will link it in the description as well. So here's the code, put that in. And you will see down here that it's installing the extensions in the background, two, six, 10, 24 of them. So it's quite a lot but it also sets up the settings and the UI and everything, at least how I like to do it. Uh, once it's done like this, I'll give it a few more minutes while it's gonna install. Uh, while it does, uh, the reason I picked Visual Studio Code is simply because of the UI and how simple it is. Here you can go, that's all done. Everything is set up, everything is ready. Uh, one of the cool features you have is the integrated terminal. So you have a terminal built in to the Visual Studio Code. It's the same terminal you can open, like here, 
but it's built in so it's easier to do things if you're working angular or python like me and you run a back-end server or npm for serve you just type it in here and let it run while you do your work now again f1 reload that's it and it's all installed and set up as you can see it supports it has a live server uh, so some of the cool things we can do is I always do this if I want to start. So let's say you want to preview a website. Uh, let's make it very, very plain. Hello world. You can tr uh, click control and L and type HTML. Now this supports Emmet, which is abbreviation, which is short code uh, codes. So to make a HTML website, you press exclamation mark and tab and voila, here we go. We're done. We'll make a nice H1 even we'll type hello world now one of the functions and things we can do is we can say this is an index fine we'll store it here now with one of the extensions you have a live server so if it's a html css plain site you just click on it and it should open it now the reason it won't do it um is because it's on linux so it wouldn't open but i could do local host port 5500 i think it is yeah, and there we go. Now, the cool part with this is if you change anything, if you literally change anything, so if I do here and go hello world to and save, it's automatic refreshed. So it's a nice feature and plugin you can do. Again, when you're done, click on it and it's closed. Now, this will come a little bit more handy if you do Angulars and things like that, but to go through some of the plugins, uh, Auto import these are for Angular. So for me, working with Angular, uh, it's a nice feature to auto import and things like that. If you don't use Angular, you can just click on here and uninstall them. Uh, bracket colorizer is mainly used. So when you code and you sit deep into a code, you can see where it ends and stops. Uh, it will highlight CSS, uh, theme, and some Git things. So to give an example, uh, let's say we wanted to set up a, a quick angular project to make it very very simple ng new let's even do it here ng new uh, my app now i have node installed so i'm just going to let this run for a minute and as you can see i don't actually have to leave the terminal at all everything it just runs into it and the reason i'm doing this is because then i can show the editor on the side and the git flow of things, which will make things and your life as a developer a lot easier. Um, one of the things I always had problem with when I used git was I found git to be annoying. It was just a tool where I did some, I had to do like git.add, git.commit, git checkout, git branch. There's so many different variations on it. It takes so much time and remembering all of them. When you use them a lot, it is simple. Now, one of the things I wanted to do was to make this as simple as possible. So if I wanted to do it now, I can open a folder. Uh, I would presume I can even go here and go my app. So this should be in here, downloads and my app. Okay, when you open it, you will see here that you have your whole project. So everything is in one place. So if I then want to go get ignore, uh, a lot of the features you can do is when you want to, let's say, use git ignore as an example, uh, a file you don't want to upload to GitHub. So let's say example, when you don't want to give the environment for our test file up, normally then it's to go in here and go, oh, it's a source and environment, something I can't remember. And that's always been an issue for me. So with this plugin that I had, you can just right click and ignore this file, done, nothing. Now you can see that when I did this, Git is already initialized. The two ways you can see this, number one, you have Git down here. So this shows me my master branch. This is your lovely Git friend. To make a commit, all you do is press the add and let's say updated Git, you know, control enter for me. And now it's gonna say that it failed to execute Git. And the reason for it is simply because I haven't set up Git. Again, I can then open the console inside uh, git config user dot name 
So always one. Yeah, I think it is. I can never remember. I can never remember. Anyways, to set it simply up for those that haven't done it, it's git config global user dot name and then the email I didn't like user dot name for some weird reason. There we go. Sorry about that. Sometimes it's harder to do. Again, we can go here, can click on here, and we did the git commit. Uh, to check it, if we open the console, git status, we are already nothing to commit. We can see we can do them as simple as that. So instead of use it, you can just use this tool. Now, I use git flow. So to make flow an easy thing when you work on something. So let's say we want to now make an ad bar. Uh, you can use flow. And all you do for the first time is you initialize the flow. And it's going to ask what's the main repo, which is master, and develop. And just keep clicking enter. Sometimes you might also also get an error in it. Uh, at least on Windows, I get that. Then I'll just do it again, and it normally works. Or I reload and do it. Now, git flow is a nice feature when you work on something. As a developer, you have your master branch and develop branch and everything else. So the master branch is normally the branch where your finished website is. So you don't want the world to see it. So develop is where we can do stuff. Now, to make it simple and kind of force yourself to do things, you can do flow and then start. Flow feature start. When you click on it, it's going to ask, what do we want to do? So let's say we want to make a nav bar. So I know that nav bar. So feature nav bar is made. So you can see now it created the branch, which is the nav bar. Now, since this is Angular, I'll cheat with the tool and just go ng g c nav bar. So I created this nav bar and it looks amazing. And then you can see again, it comes up and says, hey, you created these files. Yep, I want to commit all of them, or I can just say it's just one of them because I just committed one or I commit all of them. Now, once we committed it, we can go, okay, this is finished. We have it finished, future finish. And you can see it's closed and we're back to development. And if I then go log, we can actually should be able to view all the logs and you can see it started we updated it and then we added the html committed it and back into it so it kind of makes a very easy way to develop something so when you create something you finish that you go back or you can then go back into the development so when you want to change branches you just click on the branch you want so yeah that's really why I use it, because it's simple in that way. I don't have to fiddle around and do everything else, and everything is supported inside of it. So that's it. So I hope you enjoy it.